Beans are one of the most productive summer vegetables you can grow per square foot. In this video, I'm gonna give you seven tips on how to have a bumper crop of beans all season long. What's going on guys? I'm Brian, welcome back to another video. If this is your first time here and you are looking to learn how to grow your own organic fruits and vegetables easily and inexpensively, then start now by subscribing and clicking the bell icon so you don't miss anything. Let's get right to tip number one. Beans love a moist, fertile soil. Now, if you're someone who likes to plan ahead and is able to plan ahead, then you can get started preparing the ground in fall or winter. This is done by digging a deep, at least one foot trench along the row where your beans will be planted. All winter long, you're going to fill that trench with all the things that you would put in your compost heap kitchen scraps, grass clippings, cardboard, newspaper. During the winter, that is gonna start breaking down and creating a rich water retentive space. And once you have six to eight inches of that trench filled, you can then backfill the regular garden soil on top of it. Now, I'm not one of those people who always remembers or has the time to plan ahead. And if you're like me, all you have to do is in spring, make sure you mix in with uh, about eight to 12 inches of that soil, a good organic compost. I did have a rare brainstorm over the winter. I had the idea for chopping up a banana tree that had finished its life cycle. Now, banana trees are pretty much water in tree form. As an experiment, I'm gonna chop up a banana trunk and put it in the bottom of the area where I'm growing my beans to create kind of a moisture reservoir. So that's just an experiment I'm doing in one of the areas and I'll keep you guys updated throughout the season on how that's going. The bottom line is beans want a moist, fertile soil and we need to do everything we can to give them what they want. That brings us to tip number two. Beans want a lot of sunlight, at least six to eight hours of sun per day. And we need to do everything we can to give them that. There's not much more I can add there. Tip number three is the only one that applies to pole or runner beans and not to bush beans. And that is that pole and runner beans need support. They need poles to run on. And I remember back in my grandparents' garden, they would grow long 40-foot rows of beans, and they would use A-frame uh, bamboo structures all along that row to grow the beans up. A lot like I had here a few years ago. Now, if you have long rows of beans, that's a great way to do it. I'm growing in raised beds, so I have supports in the shape of wigwams or teepees. You can get creative as you want. Um, I'm using bamboo, you can use wood, you can use metal, you can use anything. They need to be about six, at least six feet tall, sometimes eight, um, but these are just bamboo poles tied at the top with some wire or twine or whatever you have that's gonna last throughout the whole growing season. Now we get to the fun part, it's planting time. We've got our site selected with moist, fertile soil. We've got full sun, in that location and we've got a structure for them to climb on if they're pole or runner beans. That brings us to tip number four. If at all possible, you want to direct sow your beans. Beans don't like their roots messed with once they're growing. Now, if you're in a warm uh, winter climate like I am, it's now early April and we are well past all danger of frost. So if you are as well, it's best to just plant them straight into the ground. Now, if you live in a colder climate that maybe you don't get past your last frost until May, maybe even June in some northern regions, then you're probably gonna have to get started indoors. The biggest thing on getting started indoors is you want something to plant in that is going to be the least amount of transplant shock possible to the plant. So typically, in my view, you'd wanna use something that is um, it's gonna break down. Whatever you're planting them in, it's gonna break down in the soil and you don't have to remove them and plant them. So that would be peat pellets. And with peat pellets, you'd wanna go with the larger size. I think it's like two or three and a half inches. Um, you can use toilet paper, cardboard tubes. 
fill them up with the uh, seed compost plant in there and then you can plant that whole thing in the ground once it's growing and uh, the the cardboard tube will kind of disintegrate something that i'm trying this year that i have never tried before are these little bags they're actually um, biodegradable so you can plant fill them up with your seed compost plant it in there put the whole thing into the ground and then this is going to biodegrade and let the roots kind of just come out so this, if this works, and I'll let you know, it's gonna be a great thing because these are really inexpensive on Amazon. I think I got 400 pieces for like 10 bucks. So in my area, we are well past any danger of frost and I'm gonna be planting directly at the base of each of these poles. I'm gonna plant two seeds at the bottom of each cane. And just push them into the soil about an inch deep and water them well. Tip number five is fertilizing. Now this is an easy one because in a lot of cases, you don't even need to fertilize your beans. Legumes, which beans are a part of, is a family of plants that actually make their own fertilizer. Only 20% of the Earth's atmosphere is oxygen, while 80% is nitrogen. So why do we need to fertilize if we're surrounded, our plants are surrounded by nitrogen? Well, imagine yourself stuck out in the middle of the ocean, surrounded by water but you're still not gonna have anything to drink because our bodies can't process salt water. And it's the same with plants. Even though they're surrounded by nitrogen, most plants have no way to get, get to it, except for beans, legumes. They take nitrogen out of the air and they fix it on their root system. So when you dig up your beans, you're gonna see little nodules all over the roots. That's not a disease, that's actually nitrogen that the beans have saved from the air to be able to use later. Now some legumes are better at fixing nitrogen than others. Peanuts, soybeans, fava beans, they actually can fix all the nitrogen they need. But regular beans, the typical kind we grow in the garden, green beans and things like that, they do fix nitrogen at their roots, but not enough to really get them through. Most of the time, if you've prepared your soil with good organic matter like compost, that will provide all the extra nitrogen they need. Now, if you find your plants turning yellow or not producing a lot of flowers, you can actually supplement with maybe a liquid seaweed or a liquid, fertil uh, liquid tomato fertilizer, and that will really give them everything they need. Tip number six. Beans are fast growers. When the weather warms up, they're really gonna take off and they're gonna make it to the top of a six, seven foot structure in no time. Once that happens, they're gonna start flopping over, breaking, and really becoming top heavy. In addition, the bottoms of those plants are gonna start drying out and producing less beans. It ends up killing the plant very quickly or at least slowing down production. So a way to fix that is once the beans have reached the top of your support structure, clip off the plant. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna force out other branches or vines down below. So you're always gonna have beans coming along and it's not just gonna be at the very top of the plant. Now our final tip, tip number seven. It's pretty much an easy tip because it's pretty much why you're growing the beans to begin with. And that is to harvest. The plant's main goal is not to feed you. It's to reproduce, to make seeds. If you stop picking them, the plants think, hey, I've got my seeds made, they're drying, catch you later, see you next year. So if you want your plant to keep producing, you have to keep pulling off its seeds. So it has to continually replace those. And in addition, you get a continual harvest all season long. So that's it, seven tips to keep you waist deep in bean harvest throughout the season. If you learned something new, give us a thumbs up please consider subscribing and hit the bell icon for notifications of future videos. I'll see you guys next time.